Hey there, Curvis. Welcome to the Curve the Cube podcast, episode number 66. This is Jemmy, your host and producer from Flintstone Media, and I hope everyone's having an awesome time. On this podcast, I have a very, very special guest, the super sweet and super charming Herbert Weintraub. He is, I just fell in love with this man. He's so, 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 so nice, and he is a legend in his own time. Seriously, he's... um, in this podcast, he talks about, he's a painter, by the way, and in this podcast, he talks about um, how he made it in life as an artist. He actually shared a really, really cool story about um, that moment that really spurred him to to go for it and give it a shot. And, you know, he followed that that inner pull that, that a lot of us have. And it wasn't always easy. There were struggles. You know, he was raising a bunch of kids, but <laughs> he navigated art shows and he traveled and he kept pressing on. And he he just has had so much success because of his of his gumption and his and his and his drive and and his talent and his and his and his um, charm. He's just really really great. And I found his podcast to be super duper inspiring, and I know you will too. He his paintings have um, first of all I just want to mention um, because this is an audio podcast and you know I really want everybody to to go to his website paintings by Weintraub and really get a good appreciation for his work he's so good um, the the piece about his paintings that I love the most two pieces one is just the the nostalgia and the sentiment that he embeds into everything that he does and and secondly his I loved his use of light um, which I mentioned um, as we were talking, he just he's really brilliant at making you feel like you're looking through a window into a moment in time and he's 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 really super talented and um, just a really great guy so I mean his paintings have, have ended up in the collections of some really impressive impressive folks and we get into that on this podcast as well and he also does some custom commissions so when you go check out his paintings if there's something that you want him to create you know go for it reach out and um, and, and make it happen. He's just he's just an absolute delight in in, in so many ways. Um, but I shouldn't really be surprised because I am equally charmed by his daughter, Jim Bleich, who um, <laughs> Blishy, so sorry, Jen, who is um, was my guest on episode number sixty three, and she's a fiber artist. And seriously, the the, the apple doesn't far, fall, fall far from the tree. And in talking to Herbert, um, you, you'll see why his kids are just so fortunate to have had him as, as an example. Um, he's a painter, father, just basically an artist and extraordinaire, and you're really going to love love this episode. And this episode is sponsored by Little Smiles of Florida. Little Smiles helps kids right here in our own communities who are struggling through something. So a house fire, um, an illness, um, a, a personal tragedy in the family, you know, Little Smiles does everything it can to step in and help out. So they throw some amazing events. Uh, go to littlesmiles.org, check out the event calendar and attend and 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 you can donate money that way or just actually donate. You know, click on the donate button and and send something their way because they do a really good job of of changing some kids lives in our community and they need all the support that that they can get so you can follow little smiles um all over social media you'll just look up little smiles you won't you won't have a hard time finding them and let's say thank you to dj don hitta for the music bed contained in this episode that you uh, are listening to right now and follow the curve of the cube the curve of the cube what am i talking about follow curve the cube on instagram twitter facebook tumblr pinterest uh, but you know the deal. You've heard me say it so many times, and you're going to um, yeah. Let's hook up. Follow, not hook up. Like really, just. Anyways, I don't want to get inappropriate. Um, <laughs> follow us. Uh, subscribe. Follow. Like. Retweet. All of that jazz. Um, and become a curvist. Be inspired and pursue your own dreams in the in the process. So again, this is episode number sixty six with Herbert Weintraub. Go to paintings by Weintraub. That's W E I N T R A U B and B dot com and be just as impressed as I am and sit back and relax and enjoy this episode with the living legend Herbert Weintraub. Enjoy Curve the Cube will now initiate
Hi. Have a hard time finding it? No, no, not did at all. Up there? Did you think that? No, was I was hard? just no, no, no. I was turning off my phones and everything. <laughs> and I saw you up there. You know. <laughs> Oh, oh, nice to meet you. Let me get my things. Okay. Well, welcome to my humble abode. Woohoo! Well, thank you for availing us at your humble abode. I was gonna pull this chair a little closer to over here so you guys had your space yeah, right here. Yeah, things would be. And you can take a minute to set up what you need to, and, and uh, I mean, you let know, me get I you. Really need a minute. <laughs> now listen, I have a wide variety of beverages to offer you. I have. You're so funny. Water Perrier, Coke, Diet Coke, um, orange Perrier. Or Yingling. Well, or I'll take I'll take orange Perrier. Right. I've never even heard of that, and it sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you Good this alert, fine alert. day? How are you doing, Herbert? Okay, where Do you are you from? Herbert, Kirby, or Bert? Yeah. Where are you from? Originally? I'm from Boynton. Well, I was born in North Carolina, huh. but um, we moved to Boca when I was uh, three, yeah. I think, or Miami when I was three. Both when I was five. Yeah. So I've lived there. Pretty much the entire, you know, um, went away to college, and then law school, and then when I moved back, I moved back to Boynton instead of Boca. Mm. Um, so I understand that you grew up in the Bronx. The Bronx, yes. yeah. So what was what? Tell me what it was like growing up in the Bronx. I told you what. Yeah, it was pretty mm -hmm. nice. It was a nice neighborhood in those days. Uh, yeah. We just rented a home there. Yeah. My father, I had two sisters, and uh, lived there until. Uh, Got married, really. Yeah. And uh, we loved it. Yeah. We used to go out and play sick ball every day. <laughs> oh, nice. It was, it, was, it was one of those, um, when you think about, you know, the purity of Americana, the kids running out in the street and gotta be home before the street lights come on type of yeah, neighborhood. Yeah, and nowadays the kids are all of this, you know, right. looking at something. <laughs> I know. Walking I, into traffic. <laughs> I know. I have a little one of my own, and I admit I'm very guilty. He um, definitely likes my iPhone probably a little too much. <laughs> a little bit too much. But so, I mean, obviously it holds a very um, sentimental and charming place in your heart because I know that you translate a lot of that into your artwork. Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I could always draw, I guess. I, I loved drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, like in grammar school, we had an art class, and the art teacher used to come in and give the kids all an assignment. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, you do what you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I kept there, and, uh, and then I won the art medal, you know, after you that go. graduation. So. so it's always been a great love, but I, I think I'd ever be able to make a career out of it. When you were little, what did you think? What did you think you wanted to be when you grew up? I really didn't have any great thoughts beyond art and stickball. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, was funny because I wasn't uh, a bad student, but uh, I quit high school, mm -hmm. and a couple of years later, I went into the army, mm -hmm. and I finished high school in the army. Okay. And I got the highest grades they'd ever seen. No kidding. So um, this was way back in the 50s. I'm sure I've been surpassed oh. by <laughs> since then. <laughs> but you definitely made your mark, and that's important. Yeah, I was in 54 through 56. Mm -hmm. And then I went to art school on the GI Bill when I got out. Wow. The School of Visual Arts in mm -hmm. New York. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was going to change my life, but it didn't really. Mm -hmm. I was working a job in a men's clothing store in New York, mm -hmm. and then uh, I transferred out of there to the post office. Mm -hmm. But by this time, I had one measure of success. I'd have a couple of magazine covers. Oh, cool! For a magazine called The Reporter. Were they paintings or still just drawings? Paintings. Or? Yeah. And uh, I was sitting in the post office boxing up mail mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one day. And the, the mail would come down on a conveyor in tubs. Yeah. And down comes a conveyor. My art, my covers. No Magazine way. full of them. Oh my I'm God. sitting here boxing up my cover. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So that destroyed me completely. Oh, what did you, what, what so did I you said, think? So I said, I, I got to get out of here. Mm. So my wife said, 
There's an art show in the mall over in the next town, Bayshore, Long Island. And I said, what do you mean? It's like selling your art of a push cart? <laughs> <laughs> she says, why don't you try it? So she talked me into it and I built some sort of a, a display rack out of two hat stands. Oh my gosh. <laughs> boards yeah, boards. yeah, yeah. And I hung your paintings and I made three months salary. <laughs> no kidding! <laughs> I said, where have I been? <laughs> so Pick up that magazine cover. <laughs> yeah. So I found another art show the next week in Bayshore, Long Island, in a mall. Uh -huh. And we did equally well. Oh my gosh. And I thought, wow, this is incredible. Then we found a third art show, a 10 day art show in a mall. Mm -hmm. And I did absolutely zero. <laughs> And I Go thought, boy, it. if that had been my first show, it would have been my last. That's but, true. But I already tasted blood. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. You're all frenzied up already. So it, yeah, they just graduated from there. We found people who are in the business of running shows. Mm -hmm. And just to show you how times have changed, the shows cost 15 or $20 to get into. Now they're over 400 Wow. for the same thing. Right, right. When, in those early times, when those early shows, what was what were, what were the kind of things you were painting? What were you uh, mostly about? farm scenes. And yeah. I did the. I guess you've heard of the Greenwich Village mm -hmm. art show. Mm -hmm. I did that for many years. But one morning before the show, I went for a little walk. And I happened to see a newsstand across the street from where I was showing. Mm -hmm. I said, "Gee, I wonder if that would make a painting." And it changed our lives. Wow, wow. <laughs> it did make a painting and everybody wanted it, so I started running around looking for storefronts mm -hmm. that would be interesting enough to paint. Mm -hmm. And that really changed the whole career. Mm -hmm. Nobody else had them. Yeah. Everybody had bonds. Oh, is this the one? <laughs> That's one of them. It's one of them. So you paint your your surroundings. It seems like you paint your neighborhoods, you paint your... Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really wonderful. And down here they go very well because uh, everybody's a transplanted... Right, I was going to say. <laughs> and they're all the right age, they all grew up in this right. era. <laughs> so for them it's equally sentimental. Yeah, they grew up before supermarkets took over everything. And they, right, oh that's true. Stores. So it's been a long time since I've been to New York, <clears throat> but are the... when. When's the last time you were, you were in New York? Oh, not for several years. For several years. Was it the last time you, you were there, how I don't find it interesting it? anymore. No. They, they've kind of spoiled it. Yeah. And uh, these little been, stores are pretty much gone. I'll show you. The, like the mom and pop type stores? Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. This is really nice. I really love, um, there are a lot of little details in this that I really, really like. Hey, this is the place where we used to waste our youth hanging around. Waste our youth. <laughs> you see. Oh, that's amazing. What are some of your fond fondest memories of this of this place in particular? Oh, it's just a place that you got to know the, know the owner very well. And it's where they sell like five cent pop. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can actually buy things from there. See, I watch movies. <laughs> now they say, what's your nickel? <laughs> right, exactly. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Harry's Candy Store. Have any of the people who owned these storefronts ever seen your, your paintings? Oh, I've sold them? to a number of storefront owners. Well, sure. would have been someone that reacted? Well, obviously they bought them. They must oh, have liked them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> people who knew a particular store. Yeah. Know, from their neighborhood or whatever. Yeah. React to them very well. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so you started off with drawing. When did you move into painting? When did that happen? Um, well, I always painted a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, by seeing the art shows, I saw what other guys were doing and I said, gee, I could do that, mm -hmm. probably better. <laughs> Big head, right? Well, that's so, good. Uh, you know, gra you gradually I developed some techniques that nobody else had mm -hmm. and uh, it just took off. Did you did you develop your techniques in school or was it on no, your own? No, it was on, on my own. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I know that you went to the art school, like you mentioned, but yes, yes. it sounds like you kind of were well, your own the, self-made painter. <laughs> I went to the School of Industrial Arts, which was a high school, uh -huh. but 
I just got frustrated there. It wasn't fast enough for me. I wasn't yeah. earning enough of what I really wanted. Right, right. So then I just dropped out of that and started working on jobs until uh, I went into the Army. That's great. That's good. So the Army changed my life. Yeah. I can almost picture you, I don't know, um, in some Army facility, maybe on your bunk bed or something like that. <laughs> And just see you, you know, the, the other guys around you horsing around, and you're sitting there drawing oh, something. Yeah, yeah. Your... Well, it was a lot like that. I yeah. mean, in fact, the officers noticed, and I ended up doing projects for them. Yeah. Like one guy was going to give a speech, and I had to paint his West Point crest for him. Oh, nice. <laughs> but uh, that was fun. That's amazing. That's amazing. And then when I got out of the army, I told you, I went to a bunch of odd jobs, including the post office. Yeah. Until I decided, hell, I'm going to do this full time. Look at you. Apparently the government did you well, because you it said did. the army changed your life. You saw the magazines in the post office. That changed your life. Yeah. <laughs> <So> it's like, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. I love that. Gee, why do I hate politicians? <laughs> <laughs> no, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> what can you say? What can you say? So, I also know that you you paint like landscapes and seascapes, and when when yeah, well, when I do a lot of so. old fishing boats and yeah, and boats and things like that too. We traveled. My wife and I uh, traveled all over the country looking for these things. Uh, yeah, so I was looking at your paintings online. Yeah, and they can't find these anymore. They're all gone now. Mm -hmm. They've been replaced by tin buildings. Right, right, right. There's no more character of it. Right. So you know what? What really caught my attention when I was looking at your at your pieces was I really like how you capture light mm. in the clouds, in the fields. Um, and in, like it, it almost tickles the waves when I, I saw a couple of the paintings of, of ocean waves and I was like, wow, yeah. it's really great at oh, capturing uh, light. Then one of my favorites is the old fishing boat. Yeah, I love it. Sassy lady. That's amazing. That was up in a place called Point Judith, Rhode Island. What do you hope that people feel when they look at your work? A little bit nostalgia, because yeah. all this has changed. Yeah. You don't see a waterfront like this now. It's all mansions. Yeah, that's and, true. And the boats don't have this kind of character anymore. They get uglier every year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, These are one of my favorites are the tugboats. I was going to ask you, do you have a do you have a favorite painting? Hmm. Or favorite subject matter? The old tugboat. The new oh. tugboats are ugly too. <laughs> but, but, this, but this era from around the 50s and 60s when they built them more. Is this one that you actually saw or did you make this yeah. up in your head? This yeah. One? Yeah. I love it. How do you frame them? As a matter of fact, uh, mm -hmm. Martha Moran, I was doing the show in Greenwich Village mm -hmm. and uh, I think I had a painting of a tugboat. And this woman comes along and she said, Ooh, I like that. Do you think you could paint my boat? She says, is your boat? She says, yes, I'm a Moran. My name is Martha Moran. Uh -huh. There's a boat out there that's named after me. Uh -huh. So I did it. Mm -hmm. Found the boat, did it, and she loved it. And that really made me take off on the tugboat. That's great. Other Moran people own it. How do you get everything framed? Well, I just well, I bought the frames wholesale. Yeah. Another candy store. Oh, I love it. Oh, fountain service. You know, this makes me immediately think of um, uh, the scene from It's a Wonderful Life. Uh -huh. When <clears throat> when his, uh, his, his future wife, I can't think of her name, but, you know, he's deaf in one ear, and he leans over to pick something up. I think he's working in the pharmacy, but there, you know, he, he leans over to pick something up, and she says in his deaf ear, I, you know, I'll love you forever, or something like that. Yeah. I and mean, I can't, every time I think of authentic, you know, soda shops, that's exactly what I think of, is something like that. Mm, Hamilton Beach malted makers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's great. Who are some of your favorites, your favorite artists? Who do you well, know? 
I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to put my finger on. I like Norman Rockwell work. I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say Norman Rockwell. Um, oh, beautiful. See, what I, what I like about this one, so <clears throat> for the listeners, we're lo I'm looking at a, a barn painting, and it's a, a winter scape. So what I like about this one in particular is with the tracks in the snow, it almost, it really feels like you captured a specific moment. I really like that. This is beautiful. That's wonderful. Well, thank you, Yeah, <laughs> well earned. So, um, so do you have one particular painting that just stands out to you that you really, really love that you've made? One. One, one of your own that's like a favorite. Oh, well, I like New York City, and I have a painting of the New York skyline mm -hmm. back at the house. It's mm -hmm. yay big. He, yeah. And uh, also the Brooklyn Bridge. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. paint those subjects. And uh, people react to them. Down here, you got so many New Yorkers, you know, this, this is like heaven for me. Right, I was going to say, they must <laughs> eat you up like crazy. They, they get cheery eyed looking at the stuff. You know? <laughs> so, how do you go from art shows to then being in a gallery? How did, how did you Well, the art way? shows were a big hassle. It's a lot mm -hmm. of work. As a matter of fact, Jim and Larry in the recent years have been coming up out to help me set it up. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot of work, and I was traveling all over the country. I did shows as far away as Minneapolis, Minnesota. Wow. Yeah. That is a big... From New York. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> trek. And, uh, you know, just to be there for a two-day art show. Right, people right. People all the way out there. Right. Down to uh, Houston, Texas. Wow. So we were on the road, my wife and I, forever and ever. One year, I did 48 shows. Are you serious? In uh, one out year? Of 50, out of 52 weeks, That's we did 48 crazy. shows. Yeah, it was That's crazy. That's a lot. But I couldn't stop. <laughs> was that because you loved it? Yeah, I loved it. What the yeah. hell? Are people walking up and telling you how wonderful you are. Right. All day? It can't be the worst snake for you. Right, you know? right. <laughs> yeah, I just took my son to um, an art festival in Del Rey. <clears throat> I think it was last weekend, maybe. The Del Rey Affair. Or? It was a fine art. Yeah, it was. It was just. It was a fine art festival. I think it may have even been only the first year. This may have been there in Oh, okay. Because they had the Delray Fair. I did that for years and years. Yeah, yeah. So I, I am always fascinated by, by that. You know, you, you bring out all of your all of your things, all of your wares. And, you know, I feel like artists especially, there's a sensitivity that they have that they're able to project into whatever the art form that they're creating. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like your heart is out there on display for everybody to see and walk by and critique. I mean, what were some of the hard times like for you, you know, going through that? Well, uh, actually, it, it was a great life. I had a lot of fun doing it. Mm -hmm. But it changed dramatically with the iPhones. Now people are walking by half without even turning their heads. To look. Mm -hmm. So you're missing out on a lot of potential buyers. Right. Right. And, uh, of course, the show's got very expensive, so if you don't make a little bit of money, it's very costly to be out there. Right, right. But, all in all, it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. Sold to a number of notable people. I noticed <laughs> that you have some paintings that are now in some pretty impressive collections. <laughs> um, I think I saw a senator, a governor, um, yeah, musician. Lowell Weicker was the senator, and mm -hmm. uh, Governor Hugh Carey of New York. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sold to Howard Cosell. And someone's gifted one of your paintings to Bobby De Niro? Yeah, yeah. That's they, amazing. Uh, uh, that was a bank, to, uh, Bank of America or a Citibank, one, maybe? One of the I think I, I think I saw one. Citibank. Yeah. They ordered a painting because he was their landlord. No way. He was, Bobby De Niro was he owned, there. He owned the building <laughs> that the bank was in. <laughs> so they did this paint, uh, yeah. I did this painting for them of the building and they presented it to De Niro. What's, what's the process like for you um, when someone asks for commissioned work? Obviously it's not the sentimental work that you know you've, you've built your, your life and your passion uh -huh. on. What's the, what's the different process for painting something that somebody else well, it's a little bit of trial and error. Uh, I can't get as 
emotionally involved in the painting as the things that I've experienced. Right, so I, right, right. But after a few tries, I start to get a little closer to what they want, and generally I consult them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would you change this? And blah blah blah. You know. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. So it's a, so, it's a uh, process, like a yeah, little bit they, of back and up. forth. It seems pretty satisfied with the work I do. Okay, good. I have a fellow who owns fifty of my paintings. Fifty. Fifty five zero. So. And, uh, uh, two things are amazing with that statement. One, because I, I'm not, no artist like whatsoever. <laughs> so two things. One, that you even created 50 paintings. I'm sure you've created so many more than that. It would probably just so, blow my mind. Several thousand. Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> mind blown. And, the, and then, of course, that 50 of them are owned by one person. Well, yeah, yeah. And he just called me up to do a special job for him. So yeah. I worked that out his hometown. Where is he? Up in New York State. Up in New York, too? Yeah. That's awesome. How long, how long, how much planning does it take before you actually put paint to canvas? How much, do you plan a lot or do you just go straight I for it? I stumble right into it. Yeah. I've got, you know, several thousand of those paintings are unsellable, unusable. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do with them. I have stacks of that. Now, is that just your opinion? Because maybe there, there could <laughs> well, be a buyer out there. You, you never, never know. know. Sometimes you bring it out and it's the first one it'll sell. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of trial and error and a lot of mistakes. Yeah. But uh, all in all, it's still fun. Yeah. Even though I'm not going to be doing an art show probably anymore, so I won't need a volume of work, I just can't stop painting. Right, right. It'd be like, stop breathing. Right. Me. It means that much. Yeah, yeah. It's in your blood. I found that when I when I talk to artists, especially. I mean, I think musicians are very similar too, but artists especially, it just seems like it's you can't separate the art from the person. It's it's so no, it's, kind of it's, who you it's, are. It's they kind of part of you. Yeah. An emotional thing. Yeah. And I'm always searching for and once in a while finding a new technique that I haven't thought of in fifty years. <laughs> <laughs> You think I'd have Never tried stop every learning, right? Yeah, you think I'd have tried everything by now. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a technique that you tried and you're like, oh no, this is not for me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also enjoy making tools to apply paint. Really? I've always been. My my greatest goal in life is to make the thinnest line in mm, history. I did notice some some super thin. You do have a lot of thin lines in your. In well, your the grass, for instance. Yeah, the, yeah, and and the the fencing, right? Yeah, that's no, yeah, yeah. right. Oh, uh, I've got a drawer full of tools and I... You just make them out of... I, I don't need them anymore, but I still make them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I wonder if this will work. I've already got 50 things that will work. <laughs> Maybe there was another life inside of you of an inventor and it just, yeah, it just yeah. came out in this way. <laughs> Associated with your paintings and everything. <laughs> Very cool. It was funny. Uh, do you know what Scratchboard is? Is it is it the one where um you scratch to... It's, you scratch away the black, yeah, you put it black. and it becomes the so pictures like else, a negative. Or else you can buy the stuff white and you okay. Can I think I think I did that in, in to high it. school. Yeah. So I do the the farm scenes with all that grass, mm -hmm. and I was working in scratchboard at this particular time. And I was down in my studio fooling around, and I was at, the grass was the hardest thing to do because you had to put it one stroke at a time. Right. 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 So all of a sudden I look and I see a piece of sandpaper laying there. <laughs> I said, I wonder. I picked up the sandpaper and went like this, and I had 25 blades of grass. Beautiful blades of grass! And I went to, to my wife and said, we're rich. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, you know, I could turn them out like crazy. And one day I <laughs> turned out five paintings. In one day? I sold them all. Oh my gosh. So uh, that was a good time. Good for you. Good for you. Are you, you so when you, when you say you want to always mm, look up new techniques and stuff, where do you where do you look for that? What do you turn to? Just trial and error. Yeah. All of a sudden, the night, usually in the middle of the night, an idea will oh, pop really? into my head and I'll lay there all night staring at the ceiling, thinking <laughs> of it. Can't wait to get into my studio in the morning and try it out and it flops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but every once in a while something works. What, what has been the most um, proud moment you've had in, whether it's selling a painting at a show or 
finishing a commissioned work and, and showing it to somebody, what's been your most proud and happiest moment? Well, that's, that's an odd thing to say. Mm. Uh, I mean, usually the best thing that happened to me was at the art shows. I used to go to a place called Wyandotte, Michigan, mm -hmm. which nobody ever heard of, <laughs> but they had a huge art show there and I owned it. You know, they'd come yeah. to me, then they'd walk around and see if there's anything else that they wanted to buy. Look at you, good for you. But uh, one proud moment, uh, I got a kick out of selling to Howard Cosell. You remember him, right? No, I'm so embarrassed. Well, Don't look at me. Got, well, you still see him on old broadcast. And he was obnoxious. And who, who was he? Was he the sports? Yeah, he was the sports. Okay, guy. okay. Sports commentator. Big, okay, okay, okay. I do. Vaguely. He did vaguely. a lot of price fights and a lot of games. Okay, all right. But anyway, it was a big deal selling to him. Mm -hmm. Of course, I still see him. Yeah. And I got a little 35 millimeter slide of his check. <laughs> Do you <laughs> really? You took a picture? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's been dead for some years now. <laughs> but that sounds like a pretty proud moment. Yeah. Was there, um, was there a failure that you experienced that made you, that you really value now? Well, there are a lot of shows where you do absolutely zero. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't sell anything for two, three, four days. And that takes a big chunk out of you. Right. You wonder, have I lost it? Right. So you have to keep going to shows until you gain it back. How do you pick yourself up over and over again when you're having that trail of empty shows like that? Um, I just say I have to try harder. I go home and try new things with the paintings. Yeah. And every once in a while I'll get something that'll spark sales again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's not like a baseball player making $10 million a year. Right, or, right, right. But I made a good, reasonable living all yeah. those years on art. Yeah. I couldn't have asked for more. I raised six children with it. Yeah. Six? I didn't know there were well, we, six chins. <laughs> well, we were only going to have oh, five. I know, there's only one of we you. Only to, <laughs> we were only going to have five, but we got double crossed on <laughs> the last one, the last time around. <laughs> Because that was my twin. Yeah, I was going to ask you, I mean, in all seriousness, was it at all terrifying having twin girls to raise? I, I was sitting out in the car waiting for my wife. She needed <laughs> to get an examination. Yeah. And she comes walking toward the car and she goes like this. Oh, no. And I, no. Said, I said, I hope that's V for victory. <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh man, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. But it was a great experience. They, yeah. They were a lot of fun. They so what's it like on. what's it like seeing them kind of walk in your footsteps a little bit with, with their artistic oh, side? You definitely passed it along. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And they were reasonably well behaved <laughs> Reasonably. <laughs> hey, we all have our moments. <laughs> can't help it. But anyway, with a half a dozen kids, you had to make a little bit of money to survive. Absolutely. So, you got to buy pretty good. Absolutely. You know what, I think, um, not having, you know, been there myself, obviously, I'm not one of your children, <laughs> but I can imagine seeing, if I was seeing you as my father, you know, pursuing something and over and over again, and keep going, keep going, keep trying, keep trying, and being true to who you were, who you really wanted to be, and what you really wanted to do, how empowering that could be to well, witness. Well, I that. hope I had some influence on them. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope I had some influence. <laughs> on them. I'm sure. I'm sure you did. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Definitely. Well, Jen, look how creative Jen is. Though. I know. I love her. <laughs> 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 Listeners, uh, listen back to episode number sixty-three and uh, introduce yourself to Jen if you haven't yet. Just. Making sure they know that <laughs> she was a guest too. <laughs> um, and I also noticed that you don't like to make prints of your of no, your work. No, no, I think that cheapens your work. I was I was gonna predict that's what you're gonna say. Mm. It cheapens it. And uh, and I like to paint too much. I yeah. Know I'm always able to have enough originals to to exhibit. Right. Does so if someone says, "Hey, I really like this painting, but it's already sold." Do you um, 
obviously you don't create a print, but do, do you ever well, you go something, something super nature. close? Or, yeah, yeah but nature. I have to make changes just for my own sake. I don't want to do an absolute, absolute duplicate. Right. Right. Like at the storefront, sometimes I'll change the name on the store. Or yeah. Like, or what soda they're selling. Uh, right. Go from Pepsi to Coke. Or right. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want the feeling of that error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have any, um, so I know like some of the, the small storefronts, they some of them have bought some of your work. Have any of the name brands that you've painted? Oh, yeah, in, like Pepsi, Pepsi Cola owns my work. Really? And in fact, when Pepsi Cola came to the show I was doing in Greenwich Village, and bought everything that I had Stop and had it. Pepsi Cola on it. Stop it. No way. That has to be a huge compliment. Oh, yeah. That, that was a great thing. That's amazing. Because I know um, we were talking about Norman Rockwell. He did a lot of Coke paintings, I think. If I remember, he, he had... Was that his painting that was the big... The Coke bottle? Was that him? No, I don't think so. Yeah, was it? it was I think it was. Coca-Cola. Yeah, it yeah, really was. I, I yeah. I feel like there's there are a lot of similarities between you guys. I almost mm -hmm. wish I, you know, we, we could like. It, I feel like there's a lot of similarities between you. That's interesting. That's interesting. How big was your family when you were growing up? How many siblings? Uh, I siblings? just had two sisters. Two sisters. It should have been his uh, brother, but he died at birth. Oh, yeah. And were you um, the baby of the family, or were you? Uh, the, I was in the middle. In the middle. Yeah, oh, so young, long. I have a younger sister, and I have a sister who's going on ninety now. Oh <laughs> my gosh! Oh my gosh! But do you get to see them still? Uh, occasionally, yeah. Occasionally. My the one lives in Arizona, the younger one, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. she comes out and visits us every year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's nice. And we visited her out <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the family life was good. We had. A, Pretty tight knit family. Yeah. Uh -huh. Both me growing up and with the gang I have now. And with the what? With the gang that I oh. have now. They, they all got along pretty good together. That's good. That's good. So, where can people find your your artwork and um, you know go to see go to see all of your things? Well, I do have a a website that Jim and Larry helped me set up. Mm -hmm. It's at paintingsbyweintraub.com. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you uh, mentioned the gallery too, right? I'm He's going to be working with galleries more now. I have not because, you know, they don't like the art shows. So How they, do you mean? Well, the galleries don't like the competition of an art show. Gotcha. They certainly don't want an artist in their gallery who's showing up in the street. <laughs> right, 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 right. So uh, that I'm pretty well giving up shows. I'm going to pursue galleries more. Okay. And also I don't have to turn out tremendous amounts of work. Right. Right. Really concentrate on doing the best I can. I have a feeling that you have a lot of success still ahead of you. I uh, really do. That's kind of you. I really do. I think um, I love your work. It, you know what? I, I love, um, you know, everyone who tries to create art, sometimes they don't quite hit it. And what I mean by it is that emotion that they can then translate and that person who's now observing it can mm -hmm. feel. Mm -hmm. And even though everybody sees a piece differently and f relates to it differently and feels something different, um, just the fact that when I look at your paintings, it, they make me feel something. They transport me to a place. They transport me to a time. Mm -hmm. They transport me to a sentiment. And well, I I've had people cry in front of the display. Wow. Like the ex farmer or somebody you see something that so reminded him of right. what he did where he grew up and they break into tears. How does that me. make you feel? Hmm? How did that make you how does oh, that make you well, feel? Well I'm sort of proud but a little disturbed. Oh <laughs> disturbed <laughs> I didn't really paint these things to bring tears for us. Just checkbooks. <laughs> well 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 if it makes you feel better. So I remember uh, years ago, well not years ago, maybe yeah, two or three years ago, I was at another art festival in Delray, mm -hmm. you know, and I was just walking around the booth. I had about a half hour to kill, so that's the only reason I was there. I was probably there. at that one. <laughs> maybe. Um, so I was walking around and um, there was a booth there and it, it was the only time, and I, I love art and I, you know, I love looking at stuff, but there was this painting and it stopped me in my tracks and I ended up, my half hour that I had to kill ended up turning to an hour because I couldn't remove myself mm -hmm. 
like a wart. I couldn't remove myself from this looking at this painting. It strikes you, and I. So when I'm hearing you saying you're disturbed, I can only imagine what the other people who are walking in and out or walking by must have thought of this girl just standing there, tears running out. Of her. And I don't even know why. It just it struck a chord. So, you know, when someone is looking at something that reminds them definitively of a piece of their life. Yes. I can only yes. imagine what that does. Yes. So. And of course these old candy stores get a lot of people because we all hung around with those things. Yeah, when yeah. When we were kids. Yeah, I mean well the things that, that, that um like the old soda machines, gumball machines and all those things, mm -hmm. they sell at auctions now because they're they're yeah, sentimental. Yeah, Ice boxes and you know yeah, right, whatnot. Exactly. So yeah, it's a it's a piece of our history that, you know, I'm so glad you're able to capture it. Yeah. I, I still feel bad that it's gone. And yeah. the city was a wonderful place to live in there. Now it's just doesn't happen anymore. But I don't hate way, the New York skyline the way it used to look. Yeah. With the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building and a bunch of little apartment houses in the foreground mm -hmm. looking from New Jersey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now all those things have been bored up, all those little apartment houses. And they right. got one skyscraper next to the other. The skyline is nothing. Totally now. different. Totally different. It's got no character anymore. But at least it lives on in a way through your work. That's good. Mm. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I'm sure a lot of people appreciate it. So. <laughs> Anyways, no, thank you so much for, for um, talking to me. I think... Um, well, it's been my pleasure. Your artwork is amazing. I think you're amazing. I think the, the, the yes, the, 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 the you can way say that you, your artwork is amazing. No, <laughs> the way that you've persevered, the way that, um, you know, the story of, of the magazines coming down, I just think that's amazing, so. That was a, <laughs> kind of a magic moment here. Yeah. I appreciate the interview and Yay. I hope it went well. Thank you very much. You've been awesome. High fives. <laughs> Thank you. I always end it with a high five. Thank you so much. You were so sweet. You have successfully curved the cube.